Hey, it's Kendrick with Technology Interpreters, and I want to welcome you to my channel. And today we're going to walk through Hack the Box starting point appointment. If you're a beginner, don't be afraid. Take your time. I'm going to walk you through every step of, the, of it. And I've actually like fixed all the steps that may be broken in the guide so that if you had any problems stopping you before, check this one out. This should help you to complete it all the way. So the first thing we're going to do is going to go ahead and copy the IP address. I've started this. I've spawned it. I have videos on my channel. Just go back a little bit if you need to know how to do those things. Don't worry. So the first thing we want to do is we need to do reconnaissance. We need to figure out where this like like what's actually available on this box. So we're going to do that with the sudo and map. Sudo means we're elevating credentials to be like the administrator, basically. So we have permission to do whatever we need to do. And map is a program we use. It stands for network mapper. It basically is going to check to see what's available over the Internet or network to, that we can possibly export SC is a combination of other MAP commands. It's generally regarded as very noisy, but it allows you to be able to get some additional information about what you're doing when you're scanning. So additional information is always good. SV, this means that when it does detect something, it's gonna actually come up with the version of the software that's we're detecting because once one thing you need to be very aware of is different versions of software may or may not be exploitable. So knowing the version number is very important. And then Control Shift V and we're gonna paste the IP address. By the way, Control Shift V is how you paste inside a Linux terminal. Okay, I'm gonna type Kali right there. So we're gonna do the scan. I'm gonna actually leave this going. I usually pause, but this in-map scan goes very fast. So I'm just gonna fill this space up right now by looking at the camera intensely. And boom, there it is. It's finished. Okay, so this is very quick. What you got here is you see port 80 is open, and it gives us the version. So that's what the S, the SV did. Lowercase S, capital V. Case is important. So now that we know this, anytime we see port 80 or 443, you know that's typically ports used for websites. So what we can typically do is just go up here, paste the IP address, and this opens up and bada beam, we got a website. So this is something that we can potentially exploit. Anything that allows you to put input into something, you can possibly send code, in this case, SQL injection or in input injection or many types of injection, to allow it to do something on the back end, which will give us permission. And that's what we're going to do today. So just hang tight. Let's do it. But first thing we got to do is we got to get some programs here to make some magic happen. So I'm going to open up a new tab. And because I'm going to preserve that, going to control plus, 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 right there. And that's going to give us a terminal with a big, big window. And I'm going to go ahead and going to type go buster. And I'm going to type enter. It's going to say, hey, go buster is not installed. I'm going to say, yes, that's the shortcut. The guy walks you through a longer way. Probably good to know that, but I'm very practical, so I'm about installing. Now, I do know GoBuster takes a little bit of time to install, but not that much time. Haha, <laughs> I got you. Don't leave the video. Okay, so now that we've got GoBuster installed at this point, I'm going to type a few commands. We're going to type, uh, well, actually, we need a particular file, and I am going to make sure I speed this up for you because this is going to take a while. I'm going to copy this command because, so I don't have to type it out for you. Control Shift V right there so what this is going to do git clone is like github is a repository of code code is basically programs or instructions on how to do something on a computer right or instructs a computer or something to do something or instructs software to do something and so what we're going to do is we're going to go to this repository where they store this code we're going to clone these particular folders download them locally to our machine so before we do that okay something that's very important Let's keep our workspace organized. I know everybody does this, so they finally won me over. Make directory. Okay, that's the command we're going to run. And we're going to call this appointment. I'm going to make it lowercase because, you know, I don't know. I just don't want, I don't want uppercase. So we do a ls, make sure we got that. And we're going to, at that point, appointment. All right, now we're here. So now that I've done this, we're inside the folder. I'm going to control shift V. And I'm going to copy this into the appointment folder. Through the magic of YouTube, this is going to take a second. Yo, for real, this ain't even cool. Like, it just, my, my VM just blew up. But yo, this is part of the game, so let me fix this. Yep, we restarted. So I got a funny joke. There was this IT guy, security guy, whatever, who was doing the video, and then his three VMs took up all of his space on the C drive. Yeah, okay. So anyway, we're back. Uh, sec list finally downloaded. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and run this next command. Uh, that was an important step right there because now that we've got Seclist, I want to talk a little bit about GoBuster. Okay, so let's do this. 
Build Bar, so this is what we're gonna use to basically kind of scan this website, look for directories or files or anything that we can see that's publicly available that may not have any permissions assigned to it or it's stuff that may have like usernames and passwords that are defaults or that are really, really commonly used. And so this seclis file that we downloaded is gonna have a lot of that information. It's a huge file. And we're just gonna basically brute force this connection to this website to see if we can find anything that's exploitable with easily and stuff that's already known to the community. So this is what you wanna do is type, type the GoBuster slash, just type GoBuster first and it gives you the syntax. Uh, they want you to type GoBuster uh, dash help. That doesn't work here, okay? So it doesn't, once again, they reference kind of maybe a different version of it. So how do we run GoBuster? Let me show you how we're gonna do this brute force. So I'm gonna copy it and paste it. And then I'm gonna go through all the different syntax, okay? So GoBuster, DR is, there are different modes within GoBuster, okay? And so we're gonna use the DR mode. I hate that, oh, it is, use the directory and file enumeration mode. So that's what we're using. So I just wanna break these commands down so that you understand every detail of it, okay? And then minus you, and then you have to put the link, the URL to the website that you wanna do this directory enumeration, which just means, once again, looking to see if any of the directories are exposed. Minus W is the word list. And uh, the word list is basically home Cal appointment. This is the, the sec list that I downloaded. So if you're wondering where the file that it mentions is inside sec list, because it's huge. And this is one of the problems I ran into when I was trying to use a Durbuster or doing these fuzzing or these type of attacks. It's in sec list, discover web content and directory. Okay, discovery with a Y on it, with a Y on it, web content and directory. But this is just the one that they recommend that use that we're using. I still struggle to figure out what sec list, I'm sorry, or what yeah, sec list password list to use for what. It's just going to take time. And hopefully, as I learn, I'll teach you on this channel. So let's press enter and see if this actually works. So we got errors. I knew we were gonna have errors. And so let's figure out why. So let's look at this. Let's start off with a command you're gonna to need to know. PWD, print working directory. So this is where I am currently. And I'm, rep and I'm like looking to exploit or run sec lists inside the directory. Now here's the thing. If I'm already in home Linux, home Cali appointment, I don't necessarily need to rep like to put that entire path. I know the next folder down and you don't need a slash is sec list. So if I do this in theory, that should have run. So word list is not set. So it doesn't like this command. So uh, let's figure out what happened here. Okay, so it was funny. I'm actually a victim of co like copy and pasting. That's what happened. So I just literally typed out the exact same command. <laughs> so I typed this out and it works fine. So something happened when I did a copy and paste. I didn't get clean and that's what I get for not using Notepad when I do this FYI pro tip, use Notepad, not Word document, which is where I have the script written for today's video. But anyway, now this is what you're gonna see. So this is gonna take a while. It's gonna go through and it's going to, like you can see already, it's going through and it's saying, oh, I see an images directory, a CSS directory, JS directory. Now remember, these probably are exposed wide open. So if we can see it here, then we can go to the browser and type slash images, render JS, and we can possibly start to see what's available here or run other commands to be able to kind of interrogate these different directories. So I'm gonna pause this, we'll be right back. Okay, so we made it through the directory enumeration. This is what we found. However, what it's trying to teach you is that sometimes you're gonna go through the step. It's not gonna always yield something that's good. You're not always gonna strike gold. In fact, most of the time, you're not gonna strike gold. You're gonna like strike out. Uh, so what this is doing, basically, we did the directory enumeration, but we don't have anything on the server that we can actually exploit. So we're gonna have to change over, we're gonna change our tactics, okay? So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna just try good old like brute force in this, okay? So admin, username and password, brute force. So typical things, all right? Note these, these are pretty typical. And honestly, I guarantee there are thousands of servers out here right now that are exploitable by using these. Admin, admin. Does it like that? No, I don't want to ever say passwords on my machines. Nope. All right, what about guess, guess? Nope, nothing there. Uh, what about user? user another you can try is like admin password root this is a good one root root definitely one that's out there especially on routers and stuff like that administrator and password they already had it they were actually ahead of me 
Okay. So we ran through the entire list and none of it yielded fruit, but I want to point something out in the guys. So this is very important. So what is saying here, let me make this really big for you. Okay. Cause I want to drive this home when we enter our username and password. So for instance, if I put root there, it's going to basically be select asterisk from users where username equals root and password equals root. When I did root and root, when I did guest and guest. So what I can do is, and this example is showing you what we're going to do. And I'll show you in a second, but you notice like, all right, so the hashtag, very important. That means that everything after the hashtag is a comment. And so what websites have to do is you want to like put protection in from these types of attacks, because what I simply did is I changed the query to always be true. Okay. That's what's so crazy about it. It's going to always be true. So let me ring. Oh, I'm getting bigger. I need to get smaller. There we go. Okay. The way we do that is, all right, so it's going to select anything from the database where username equals admin. And then I use the hashtag right there because I'm going to put that in the password, like right there after admin. So I'm going to put a semicolon to close out the query and then a hashtag, which makes everything else that follows a comment. So it's going to always be true. So select it. Asterisk from users where username is admin. It's going to give me the admin every time. And then I can start to use, once I see that this works, I can really go to work because I can start writing a whole other queries after this. So I close out where username equals admin and something else equals this and something else. And that's how you do SQL injection. But let's do it in real life. So what we want to do is all we need to do is we need to put admin, username equals admin. And we're going to close it out with a semicolon. So we're doing that before the actual code does it, right? Because that's what the code does. That when you put the admin in there, remember, the code originally was going to put a semicolon and all that. We're injecting these two characters right here. So we're putting the semicolon in already. And it's like, cool, that's close. So username equals admin. Oh, comment everything else out. So we need to put the, the pound sign right here to comment everything else out. And when we do that, if I've done this correctly, Oh, it wants the password. So see this another stuff. Just put anything for the password because it's all going to be commented out. And we just got the flag. My friends, this is SQL injection. This is a very important skill to have. And so quickly, we're going to go through the questions now. Let's finish this up. Let's close this out. I know you got the satisfaction of seeing it, but let's close this out properly. What does SQL stand for? Structured query language. What is the most common type of SQL injection? Common, or the most common type of SQL vulnerabilities, uh, I would say SQL injection. Okay, there you go. What does PII stand for? It's, uh, what is it? Uh, private um, information. Ah, oh, I forgot. P wait, wait, hold on. Why can't I think of, forget it. I'm not going to, personal identify information. Jeez, I can't believe I forgot that. Bad, bad security guy. Like, jeez, I can't believe so what does OpSwap's top 10 uh, list name as the classification for this type of vulnerability? It's got to be some kind of injection attack. So, yeah, what is it? AO3 2021 injection. Uh, what service and version are running on this? We saw we saw this one. This is easy. We saw it was HTTP. It's Apache. Service is running. I don't think I have that open. Nah, that's actually at the top of the list. But we're running Apache. And I just want to show this to you in the original scan. Do I still have it up? No, I don't have the original scan. Oh, because my box crashed on me. So, but basically what this boils down to is uh, this it's an Apache server version. And then we had the version number and we can do that. That was what we got in the MF scan. So Apache HTTP 2.3. And that's what they want there. So what does the, what, what is the standard port used for HTTPS protocol? The standard port use for H oh, HTTPS, which is secure, is going to be 443. Okay. And then what is the luck based method of exploiting? I would say of exploiting login page, I would say brute forcing is what they're looking for. Yep. Okay. What is the folder in the web application? What is a folder called in web apps application terminology? I would say a directory. All right. Good deal. What response code is given uh, for not found errors? What response code is given? Uh, is it well, 401? 404, 404, I'm tripping. All right, uh, 
what switch do we use with GoBusters to specify we're looking to discover directories? We want to use the DIR switch. And then finally, what symbol do we use to comment out parts of the code? That's going to be the hashtag. And then the flag itself we submitted and there's the flag. So anyway, congratulations. If you made it to the end of the tutorial, congratulations. Thank you for hanging in there. Honestly, you can't, a lot of people just want to get this quick. So they want to like look at a few seconds of the video and then move on. Don't do that. Take the time, walk through all these tutorials. It is literally free training for cybersecurity. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, and you made it to the end, uh, do hashtag. What did I mess up on? Hashtag 404. That way I know you made it to the end of the video where I messed up and said 401. No, hashtag 401 if you made it to the end of the video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Boop, boop.